this is where I'll be starting this weekend. On the tail. Some of the smallest components of the build. Okay, one completed rudder. We'll lift it together. And how to do this, and every time I practice it, I just stuff it up completely. Hi and welcome. I'm uh, going to be building a aircraft kit. Uh, the kit's from America, uh, from a company called Sonics. Uh, there's been uh, many different versions over the years. Um, I'm not sure of the amount of years they've been actually building, but um, they're quite well known. In uh, Most of us, you've probably heard of uh, Oshkosh. Uh, they're, they're stationed at Oshkosh in, in a hangar there. Never been there. I'd love to go. Perhaps I will one day. And um, I've been looking at this aeroplane for quite some time, well over six months now. I've watched a few vlogs from people. There's some very talented, very, very talented people out there. Um, throughout this uh, vlog series, I'll put links down below if I can work out how to do it. And um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's going to be a wonderful ride. Um, I need something for my early retirement. Uh, I happen to have chosen this. Um, and uh, I'll be starting this weekend, being January of 2023. They estimate in the range of let's call it 800 to a thousand hours something like that most people probably take around about 1200 hours um, I'll probably be the same um, and uh, hopefully I can finish it uh, even if I don't I'm sure I'll enjoy the time it takes to do it the kit looks something like this sorry about the shakiness but uh, just taking a couple of little quick snaps uh, off their website and printed them out for reference photos as you can see it's a quite modern style of aircraft internally in the cockpit with some um, EFIS displays there you can certainly use the old steam gauges if you will uh, it's very dependent on the user I guess um, there's a three or four, I think, versions of engines that go into this plane. Um, they're all available uh, from their website or through the company Sonics. I don't know, let's call it uh, 60, 70 drawings. That's them there. Um, this is uh, what I'll be starting on this weekend. It's a, it's a V-tail, uh, very similar to a Bonanza. Um, with the difference of having a rudder as well as your elevators or rudderators as they call them so they both work independently with the rudder and also in, in pitch control which I'll learn more about as I go um, so yeah that's, uh, that's the gist of it um, I've got it the rudder will be starting first. I've got a few of the components out here. There's the skin up the top there. A couple of the um, drive horn assemblies, uh, ribs and the like and that sort of stuff. As I build this aeroplane, I will get more into the ins and outs of it in the first sort of uh, couple of... 20-30 minute videos it's going to be. It's going to be probably one of those things where I'll forget things, I'll stuff up things, but you know, who cares? It's a, it's a document for my reference, and uh, which is part of the requirement of building an aircraft. You have to fully document it, um, either on a, you know, something like a, a video such as this, or pictures uh, printed out on a folder. There's probably no right or wrong way to do it it's just up to the user so long as it's documented so long as you've got reference photos so long as you've got reference of some description within the kit 
and um, it's just uh, one of those things where you will, you know, learn with it. Okay, I've completed what I hope is correct for the um, stub, the little uh, rudder cutout, according to the drawings. Um, I've uh, done some reference lines showing which way is forward, up, port side as it's laid out on the drawing. Uh, I just want to take note that it's don't take for granted that these parts are 100% the correct width and therefore measure off either end if there's anything like that. Just double, triple, thousand times check. And this, is, this piece here was actually uh, pretty close to around about maybe 8 or 10 mil short. It's not detrimental to the cutting of the rudder um, so long as you sort of work from from one side which I did I started from the cut edge worked my way across uh, made this line through here and simply used a, a tape or a measuring device measured out 310 mil or 309.8 and used that line here as a reference for this line through here so you can actually see on there that if I'd followed this line through to here the whole piece of rudder from this end would have been shorter now I don't know that that's going to be that uh, you know detrimental to the to, to the design I'm gonna make sure that it's 100% right and um, so that hence all this now I've probably set this thing out five times and each time something was just not gelling and I found out what it was it was on the this this piece here I wasn't gelling at the time that when I was looking at the distance between here and here which is the distance between here and here it was it looked to me a lot shorter I was forgetting to take into consideration that this piece was actually sort of going down on the on the plane for the rudder itself so um, I think it's right it's ready to cut I'm going to take a gamble and cut it now um, so I'll come back in a moment and hopefully it'll all be cut correctly the drive horn assembly calls for a five degree upturn. I'm just going to double uh, check that. Now, I'm going to place the digital inclometer, inclometer, whatever you want to call it, leveling device that'll loom me. Uh, we'll zero it on there and we'll move it. We'll zero it. On there, and move it up onto there. There we go, five, de ooh, five degrees. Perfect. I've just um, dry fitted the control horn uh, into the bottom of the now cut rudder. Everything seems to be fitting okay. It's not real good. I'll take that out of my way. Seems to be fitting okay. Whoop. So I'll carry on and I'll just click all this together and uh, see how it looks. Okay. Okay, I have now clicked the rudder together. Uh, hinge is just temporarily positioned. I'm going to leave the top um, pilot holes out until I just check the distance across here with the rudder cap, which I'll cut now. I'll just dry fit it in there to ensure that it's sort of fairly close to the top of that uh, if not I'll start again but anyway there is it all clear code together uh, it doesn't look too bad 
I think it's okay. So, uh, yep. Back soon. Okay, uh, rudder is uh, now all um, piloted, uh, fitted, hinges fitted, uh, fiberglass cap, and I think it's all good. A few issues with it, um, basically orientation issues, just trying to work out um, where things go. Again, I can't stress enough. Um, keep looking at drawings and um, if in doubt, do it again. Start again. So uh, there you go. I can uh, now take it apart, uh, upsize it for the uh, CCP44 or CCP41, I think they are rivets, whatever they are. Anyway, we'll talk about that soon. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, rudder is now all upsized with copper clecos. I will uh, now pull it apart, deburr it, prime it, and throw it back together. Okay, all riveted. You can see. Appears to be okay. Anyway, we'll uh, carry on with the rest of it. Okay, one completed rudder. Um, all riveted together except for these two down here I'm going to get a small um, handheld uh, rivet gun just to, with a smaller uh, nose on it to, the one that I've currently got is just too fat in here I'm also using a Chicago uh, pneumatic rivet tur uh, strongly recommended it's uh, very easy to do if you've got nine and a half thousand rivets to put in I think you want to be using something like that um, anyway that's pretty much it I'm going to now start the elevators or the um, rudder as they call them anyway there you go